And one, one night, I decided, well, there were two, two facts. Oh, yes, I, I, I finish very soon. Uh, there are two facts at that time that moved me to, to come back to, to Chile. Um, I met uh, the poet Gabriela Mistral, and she was dying. She's a magnificent poet. Uh, now they tried; they have tried to make out of Gabriela Mistral uh, a sweet lady who sang about the poor boys and and the children, and with a tender soul. No, he was a terrific poet, anguished, uh, violent. Uh, with the sex drive, that was, was really fantastic. And this poet could not live in Chile. She was living at some other place. She had the Nobel Prize for Literature. She became the, the Nobel Prize for Chile for Literature, and she didn't come back to Chile. When, once, once she was asked, uh, uh, Gabriela, the divine Gabriela, they call her the divine Gabriela, in the papers. Divine Gabriela, they ask you, why don't you come back to Chile? You have the Nobel Prize, you have everything you wanted, you are so loved. And Gabriela said to, said to them, look, si vuelvo a Chile, el primer día, todos van a decir, ahí va la, va la divina Gabriela. Al segundo día, van a decir, ahí está la Gabriela otra vez. El tercer día van a decir, ¿hasta cuándo esta vieja de mierda? <laughs> so that, that, that was a feeling. And I met her and I realized that she was really ill. And uh, I had a couple of conversations with, with her. And I invented the story, The Cartwheel, Una Vuelta en el Aire. It's been translated into English. If you have the, the occasion to read that one, to, to complete uh, this little talk, and that would be a very positive addition to understand the feeling I had. Uh, it, was, it was a story of a young man who is asked by Gabriela Mistral to get for her a Chilean flag, flag because she knows she's going to die. Uh, she wants that, uh, how do you say, ataud, the coffin, the coffin be wrapped in a, in a Chilean flag. Uh, exactly what happened. And then um, I tell the story of this young man who admire her, who is uh, excited by, by her power, her poetry, and he tries to fulfill this tag, to find a Chilean flag in the winter in New York. There's no flag at all. So he had talked to somebody who made a special flag and everything. And then when she dies in New York and, and he sees that the poet is being a victim of the official ceremonies and, uh, and now the, the people of the, the official of the government taking care of her and I felt there was such a contradiction that I, I wanted to, to be in, in I, I didn't want to to die the way she died. And I think uh, that was a lesson for me. I decided to come back. And, and that's part of the story. And the second reason was that one night, I was living uh, in a very poor neighborhood, and somebody has given me a bed uh, at, in, a in a room close to the close to the window uh, at the rear part of the building. And there, the, 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 there was the, this garbage cans. And, but there was a window and there was a bed, and I was staying there on my bed. And I came back to, to my room to read the book I was reading on, in those days. I remember exactly what book was it. It was called The Catcher in the Rye by Salinger. I was fascinated by the book. I came to it, so in the cold daylight, I said, I'm going to my bed and finish the book. 
And I said, and then a bum is sleeping on my bed. Had gone through the window, and I found him there and say, hey, hey, sir, sir, you are sleeping on my window. How do you come? And then he asked me, who, who are you? <laughs> that was a very good question, a metaphysical <laughs> one. Who are you? And I said to him, I live here. I'm a guest at this house, and this is my bed. Where do you come from? I, I come from Chile. Yes, I, I'm an American. This is my country. This is my house. This is my bed. <laughs> and then um, I try to, to to take him away with violence, and suddenly a knife was, was there. Um, well, that was very. The, it was time to take a decision, <clears throat> and I took it. I I came back and. And then I, I abandoned the, the idea of being a, so to say, North American writer. And then I, I, I tried again. And uh, I, I tried to come back to New York, uh, not traveling by airplane. It was impossible. I had not the money to do it. But I took a train, and I decided to make out to stop hitchhiking the whole way up to the north. And I took a train, and this train stopped in Bolivia, Oruro. <laughs> and it was a very slow train, um, and very, very hot. And the moment we arrived in Oruro, there was a carnival, carnival. And many groups of young people were at the station singing and dancing and I opened the window, and I looked at them, and, they, and I had to train to go with that train to La Paz. And then among this group was a girl who was dancing with, like the Bolivian people, they had so many scares, one behind the other, one under the other, and they moved, and it was fantastic. And they were dancing with such an energy, and this, this girl looked and smiled, and I was at that time, yeah, I had hair, I had hair, I had, uh, had hair, I, I was skinny. Uh, I could imitate uh, Paul Newman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I put a face a moment, and she said, and then she said to me, Ay, vente, vente para acá, hermanito, me dice, vente a bailar con nosotros. Come, come and dance with us. And then I said, no, no, I cannot because I'm going to La Paz. And this is a, a, a game with words that maybe some of you do want to understand. She said to me, Paz, vas a tener cuando te mueras. <laughs> Bájate, me dijo. So Paz, that is meaning peace. So peace are you, you're going to have when you die. Come with us. And really, I, my, I put my, my back, uh, I, I threw it through the window, I came with, and I lived in, and danced, and drank, and enjoyed enjoy this Latin America that I loved so much. Because they, this girl took me to, to her home. Her father was a minero, hmm? minor. Uh, he worked hard very early in the morning, and I stayed at home with the daughter. And um, he didn't like that. <laughs> and then one Sunday, uh, he took my back, and I didn't ask him to, ask him to do that. He took my back and said, come with me. And he put me back in the station and said, go back. <laughs> I, and I, and I, I have discovered with that gear, with that music, with that drink, with that dream in the fantasy of Latin America, I didn't want to, to be a, a North American writer any, any, anymore. I love. American, North American literature. I keep reading North American literature. I think it's a big influence in my life. But that was not my thing. Uh, I wanted Latin America. Uh, well, I think that, that's enough to begin a conversation, if you like. Please.